At iPad for Architects, we just released online courses in SketchUp for iPad, Procreate for Design, and Procreate for Rendering. But the courses are also designed to work together, like in this SketchUp plus Procreate bundle, where we design a house from scratch, starting with a site plan, then making an image board, then developing a scheme from diagram to drafted plans, sections, and elevations. Then we export the 2D plans to SketchUp for iPad and build an exterior model of the house. And finally, we export scenes of that model back to Procreate so we can make a rendering like this in three hours or less. All the courses are done in this draw along format. And if you're curious what that looks like, here's a sample from the SketchUp for iPad course where we download some FF&E from the 3D warehouse. SketchUp for iPad also comes with 3D Warehouse. And although this is ostensibly a lesson about how to prepare views for the rendering we're going to do in Procreate, you can also think of this as a generalized lesson for how to use 3D Warehouse in SketchUp for iPad. So I'm going to add a couple of pieces of furniture, one to this deck and one to this patio out front and I think I also want to add a car in the back and this is all going going to go into a third version of the view that I've created. I've created two views so far final with shadows that's here and final with no shadows and that's because we're going to be using these in different ways when we import them into the procreate rendering before we do our rendering but I'm going to add one more version now and I'm going to tap here and I'm going to call that final with entourage. Now we're going to be drawing our entourage or I'm keeping this as simple as possible so that you don't need any drawing skills to create the rendering we're going to be creating momentarily. But sometimes it's very helpful to have the entourage in place as both a sense of scale and as something you can directly trace if you prefer a hand-drawn style of rendering. So let's look at that. Let's look at the ways to add, as I said, a couple of pieces of furniture and a car. And right here is the 3D warehouse icon. And I'll tap that. And I'm going to go back out of this. You can see I was thinking about a Mini Cooper, but I want to start from scratch. And to eliminate this, if you don't have your keyboard attached to your iPad, just scribble what you see up there in the field. Now, when I look for models, I like to keep my models very simple, and, and I like to use low polygon and low file size models. So you can he see here, I generally set the file size to about 10 megabytes and I set the polygons to anywhere between 0 and 5,000 polygons. Now, sometimes I'll stretch that if I can't find exactly what I'm looking for, but I'll try to find a model within those parameters. So let's go with our patio furniture first. And I'm going to write in patio furniture. Furniture didn't quite work. I missed it a little bit, so let me try it again, okay? Patio furniture. I just got back from lunch, so I'm a little bit shaky still. And here we go, patio furniture. And I'm going to add it from, I'm going to make sure I'm not in products, although that works just fine, but I'm going to be in models. And that's a larger database to pick from, okay? So I'm going to scroll down here and see what's available. And here is a uh, attractive low poly outdoor table and chair set. So I will now tap that. Now I'm looking at this and it's got a lot of line work in it. And from my experience, I know that that line work might get too bunched together and make this a dark, a dark piece of furniture. And I'm, I want to look for things that are very simple and with a simple outline and lots of white space. So I'm going to ignore this one. And I'll keep going down. And let's see if we find either a lounge chair that we like 
or a table. And here are some lounge chairs. So let me tap on these. And that looks pretty good. Nice and simple. So I'm going to download these. And here they come. And of course, the smaller an object is, the easier it is to download it. Now that says it's downloaded, but it's lost somewhere in there. So I'm just going to start moving the pencil. And sure enough, there they are, okay? So they're a little bit buried inside of this. If I come larger now, you can see that they're buried. And this is a common problem. So I'm going to just start by initially moving up like this until they come out of the ground there. And then I'll tap the corner and bring it back down, okay? Now that's the key. I'm going to do that again. When it's something is floating like this, and I can tell if it's floating, I can turn the shadows on, and you can see here it's floating. So that's not helpful. So instead of panicking, just tap the corner first, and that tells SketchUp you want to use that as the reference point, and then just drag down, okay? And that will land. Now let's turn these to the south so that people can enjoy the sun. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the rotation tool. And I'll tap that. And now, this is very important. I get all of these options for controlling the axis lock. Okay. And we've talked about this previously. But I'm going to choose the blue axis lock because I want to swing them clockwise 90 degrees. Now, once again, I will just tap on the corner that I want to use as the reference. Then I extend the line out and pause, lifting the pencil, and then I rotate it 90 degrees. And it should snap to 90 degrees. And in fact, it has. And now while it's still active, I can go back to the Move tool and drag it over and situate it this way, OK? So I'm not sure why I'm putting them there, but it just kind of looks good. And now I can use the Select tool and tap out. So that's how you add furniture from the 3D warehouse. Now in the next segment, I'm going to add more furniture to that, and it's going to bring up some other issues. But I'll see you on the other side of that segment.